Hello, hello, you sexy bastards. How are you today? We are back with some more oversimplified. And we are here. We are finally here to the American Revolution. Okay? I know a lot of people are excited about these episodes. The American Revolution episodes. So let's find out about the American Revolution. I don't know much about this. As I said, I'm Bulgarian. I know Bulgarian history decently well. World history... I mean, I know world wars and shit, but... About it. Holy smokes. Christopher Columbus, that is no way to address the king and queen of Spain. What is wrong with you? Okay, okay, so you know how we're looking for a new trade route to India, okay. right? Right. And the earth is round, right? Right. So I'm thinking we can just sail the other way around the planet, right? Yeah. So I set sail, oh, yeah, one right? Second. Mm -hmm. and I one second. Okay, I fixed it. I'm back. And I reach India, right? Right. Wrong. Wrong. I did not reach India. I did not. All right. No. All right. Get to the point. Did you know <laughs> there's a whole nother freaking continent out there? Okay, and you think I should care about this? Why? Wait. Oh, I'm sorry, did I- Didn't he think it was India till he died? I'm pretty sure he thought it was India till he died, no? I forget to mention there's gold everywhere. Gold? And savages. Columbus landed in Central America in October 1492, and he had the time of his life. And by that I mean he went on a huge theft and murder spree. He stole gold, jewelry, people, and a oh, hammock. Women? And then he returned what? to show off all of his riches, including a few previously undiscovered items, such as tobacco, the pineapple, turkeys, and a hammock. Now I know what you're thinking, but oversimplified, Columbus didn't discover America, the Vikings did. And you'd be partially right. In the 11th century, Leif Erikson was the first European to land Leif in America. Erikson. But hey, if you love Vikings so much, then why don't you check out today's sponsor? Vikings War of Clans Wait. is a mobile If the Vikings discovered America first, did they do anything? Or was the boy just like, yo, this America, I'm out. I found was inspired it. Inspired by the famous strategy and RPG games of the 90s like Age of Empires and Civilization. Do you like building cities, collecting resources, training armies, joining a clan and going to war? Yes. Friends, Vikings War of Clans is for you. And what makes its world so addictive is that more than 20 million online players are constantly changing the way the game evolves by never-ending fighting over resources, forging new alliances, and competing in live events. Support my channel by downloading Vikings for free only from my links in the description box below and get the special bonus of 200 gold coins and a protective oh, shield. Don't 200? forget to me up and join my Vikings clan under Bro, my that's like 10 prostitutes. Simplified. Now, where was I? Oh yeah. I think. Columbus, time of his life. Hammond. Killing people. And suddenly the race yeah. was on to explore and conquer the new world. <laughs> After a couple centuries of warring with the natives and each other, the European powers had claimed quite a lot of land, including this area, which both the English and the French claimed as theirs. <laughs> One day the French said, I'm going to build some forts along here. And the English were like, could you not? And the French said, sorry, but no, I could not not. And they went ahead and built their forts, which pissed off the English. So they sent an up and coming British lieutenant colonel by the name of George Washington with a combined force of British troops and Native Americans. After a short battle, the French commander said, all right, all right, we surrender. Okay, boys, pack it up. They're surrendering. Oh, sorry, was I not meant to split his head open with a tomahawk? Ah, don't worry, it's not like this will start a seven year long major global conflict. Ah. And what happened next was a sep. What is this, like Assassin's Creed? This was the plot of the Assassin's Creed game, right? Fuck, what was this dude's name? Seven year long major global Indian conflict. Tomahawk, Great Britain won. Dude. At the peace negotiations, Spain gave up Florida, while France gave up Florida? all of its territories in North America. But Britain's victory Damn. came at a cost a 60 million pound cost. They were now broke, in a lot of debt, and had to come up with some way to repay it. So they went to the con. Bro, this is like the fifth time we've seen in the last two videos that England has been broke. Henry VIII and now this shit? Are they always broke? Colonies and said, okay, listen up. So a huge part of the war was spent protecting you from the French, and now we have no money because of it. So... I'm not sure what you're saying here. Okay, so we spent a lot of money protecting you from the French, right? Right. And now we're broke. Taxes. That certainly is a picture. Tax everything. To me. We spent all of our tax the windows. You have five windows tax. Money protecting you, and now we need money. Tax. Can you please pay us back some money? No. No. Okay, we're just going to go ahead and tax you. In 1764, Britain introduced the Sugar Act, forcing the colonists to import sugar and molasses exclusively from the British and to pay duties on them. Then a year later, they introduced the extremely controversial Stamp Act, and it worked Stamp a little Act. something like this. Hello, shopkeep. Hello, Mr. Bungleberry. Here's the deed for your new shack. Stamp. That'll be three pence, please. Wait, what was that? It's the new tax. I get a stamp on any paper or documentation I make, and you have to pay for it. Would you like to see this pamphlet that explains everything? Stamp yes, please. It. Okay. He's stamp it. Stamp. Two pence, please. This is awful. You know what? Just give me a deck of cards so I can go gamble my pain away. Okay. True. No. No. You better not stamp every Don't single fucking card. Stamp. Throw Obviously, the tea in the, the ocean. Were like, 
Hey, my dudes, this new tax legislation right here, this is BS. Cool. Until now, they had enjoyed relative freedom to rule themselves, and now suddenly Britain was asserting its control. They were especially unhappy because they didn't have any representatives in the parliament. They weren't really exuding their control. They were taxing everything. Uh, I mean, come on. That was Technically, that's in school you control, so but it's fucked up way to Orators gave fiery speeches. British goods were boycotted, and anyone loyal to the British found themselves increasingly harassed. Yeah. The whole thing actually began to take quite a toll on British business, and okay. after just a couple years, the British were forced to repeal the Stamp Act. But we still desperately need money. What should we do? We could try taxing the colonies. Great idea. Wait, didn't we literally just try that and it failed miserably? Man, look at me. By the way, uh, I'll stop this currently. And explain something. The only thing I know of the American Revolution is I watched the TV series while I, while I was in America about like the start of the revolution with the dude that went from one place to the other to alert the troops and fight. I don't remember anything about what the TV series was called, but I remember watching like an episode before I fell asleep of that shit. I look fabulous. Have you ever seen such okay, a handsome boy? Shit, but, but. No, sir, Georgie. No way. You're the handsomest, smartest, big ass forehead king brother. That ever lived, and everybody likes you. You're doing such a good job. But your majesty? Oh, you're still here. Get the hell out. So he in 1766, the British made a declaration saying, we can spinner. do what we want because we're in charge and you can all go suck it. Then they levied a whole bunch of new taxes on the Americans via import duties. Glass? There's a tax for that. I knew Lead? It. There's Windows. a tax for that. Paper? Tea? Oil? There's a tax for that. And once again, the Americans boycotted British goods. Tea? Oil? There. What is happening here? Actually, never it's mind. Tax for that. And once again, the Americans boycotted never British mind. goods. British business felt the pinch, and the British had to back down. All right, this is ridiculous. They're my colonies, and I have to be able to assert my control. Repeal all the new taxes except for the <coughs> one tea. Also, send 1,000 troops to Boston to take control. Oh, and make the colonists pay for them. And as British troops arrived, the tension. Build a wall and make the colonists pay for it all. In Boston was palpable. You could cut it with a knife. And it was all about to come to a head. On March 5th, a band of local patriots began heckling a British guard at the customs house. More and more Go Americans home, joined boy. in the heckling, while more British troops turned up in support of their comrade. Snowballs were thrown at the British. Ooh. The snowballs turned to rocks, the rocks to oyster shells. The soldiers, Oyst outnumbered, panicked. Shells. One thing leads to another, and you can see Chip where you. this is going. Five civilians were killed. Oh. The Patriot press throughout the colonies declared the Boston Massacre an unwarranted crime committed against the people of Boston by the cruel British. And the anger continued to grow. A British revenue schooner that ran aground in Rhode Island was burned by the locals. When it came to light that the government... Hey, Rhode Island, Island, that's where I was when I was in America. Massachusetts supported the suppression of the colonists. His house was burned by the locals. And next, the colonists would set their sights on the remaining tax on Damn. tea. On December 16th, 1773, a band of patriots known as the Sons of Liberty disguised themselves as Native Americans no marched girls down allowed. to Boston Harbor, boarded a British merchant ship loaded with tea, and in front of thousands of spectators threw nearly 10,000 pounds worth of tea overboard. The British were disgusted, and they punished Massachusetts with a vengeance. They dissolved its general assembly, revoked their charter, and sent 3,000 more troops to occupy the city, meaning Boston and Massachusetts were now essentially under the direct rule of Great Britain. And oh boy, were the people pissed. The other colonies saw what was happening and worried they might be next. Everyone's so they unhappy. Trust to decide what to do. 56 delegates from 12 colonies gathered and met in Philadelphia at the First Continental Congress. And the roll call read like a who's who of America's finest thinkers. I'm talking lawyers extraordinaire Johnny A and Johnny <coughs> J, experienced military commander George Washington, businessman and future alcoholic beverage Samuel Adams, fiery orator Patty H. Guy who married a rich lady, Big J Dickinson. And while they weren't present at the first Congress, John names like Dickinson. James Madison, Benjamin Franklin, Thomas Jefferson, and much later Alexander Hamilton would all serve time in the Continental Congress. The question now, though, was what to do about the British. After much bitter debate and disagreement, they eventually agreed them on off. an amazing solution. They would simply ask the British to stop. Can you stop? No. It didn't work. Okay, then tell the local militias to start arming and be ready at a minute's notice. And across the colonies, these Minutemen stood ready for the beginning of the American Revolutionary oh, Jesus War. Christ. Now having your colonies in open rebellion is one thing. Once they start arming themselves, that's when it really hits the fan. So British General Thomas Gage ordered 700 troops from Boston out into the rebel-controlled Massachusetts countryside to destroy stores of arms and ammunition held by the rebels in Concord. The British set out in the middle of the night. Patriots, including Paul Revere, rode ahead to warn that the British were... Ah, yeah. This is the episode I saw. This dude rode ahead during the night for like a day to warn the people before the army reached them and fucked them up. And he managed to do it or some shit. This is all I know of American Revolution. It's time to prepare. The two sides now. met in Lexington as the sun began to rise. They faced off against each other, and in the confusion, somebody shot first. 
The shot heard around the world marked the beginning of the American War of Independence. The rebels were outnumbered and had to fall back to Concord as the British split up to search for rebel supplies. However, more and more Patriot rebels kept showing up, and this time it was the British who were outnumbered as more fighting kicked off in Concord. The most professional army in the world was forced to flee back to Boston at the hands of local, poorly trained militiamen. And all along the British were back to Boston, Patriot rebels continued to gather and open fire on the retreating British. When Damn. the British reached Boston, the rebel militia surrounded them. Boston and the British were now under siege as small land and naval skirmishes continued around the city and the British would suffer another embarrassing blow, this time in upstate New York. Colonel Benedict Arnold concocted a plan to take the British stronghold Fort Ticonderoga, which held a large amount of guns and ammunition. He set off towards the fort yeah, the alone, guns and hell to recruit men along the way when he came across the Green Mountain Boys, led by Ethan Allen, who, as it turned out, had the exact same plan he did. So they decided to work together. But I'm in charge. No, 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 I'm in charge. You can no, see where this is charge. going, This huh? went on for some time, until the Green Mountain Boys threatened to go home, and Arnold had to concede. The group raided the fort at night while the Redcoats were asleep, and they caught them completely by surprise, taking the fort and all of its munitions with almost no resistance. Wow, great job, Ethan. Very impressive. By the way, what happened to that other guy we sent to take the fort? Who? Benedict Arnold. Never heard of him. Ouch. <laughs> what? At least they didn't kill him. Nobody knew what was going on. The colonies were in open rebellion, and for now, they even seemed to be winning. So King George fired General Gage, replaced him with General William Howe, and ordered the rebellion to William be put down Howe. immediately. Okay, the British are definitely going to retaliate for all of this, so we should probably put together a proper army. First, we need to pick a commander-in-chief, and I think we can all agree that that George job boy. is the man, the myth, the legend, George Washington. My friends, I am humbled and honored that you would consider me for such an important role. I did not expect for this All break. right, you've been showing up in a military uniform every day for the last few <laughs> <years. laughs> Okay. We all know you wanted this, so cut the crap, George. Dude. I'm cool. So Washington began his journey up to Boston to take command of the newly established Continental Army, just as the British made their first major attempt to break the siege. They made plans to take the high ground on Bunker Hill, but spies warned the Continentals of the British plans, so they fortified Bunker Hill and set up defensive positions on nearby Breed's Hill. The day of the battle came, and as the British advanced, a barrage of Continental gunfire was opened up on them. Oof. Twice they tried to climb the hill, twice they were pushed back. The battle lasted three hours until the Continentals finally ran out of ammunition and had to retreat, <laughs> allowing the British to take the hill. Well, Bro, imagine losing land because you fucking ran out of ammunition to shoot the people coming against you. That's technically a British victory. Is that a victory though? Nearly 1,000 casualties to the Continentals 400. The colonists Damn. showed the British that this wasn't just a rebellion. Okay, so yesterday, uh, after the last video, someone told me that Medieval battles, I assume this is considered as well, uh, usually the casualties were around 15 to 20 percent. Like actually dead people, the rest was, you know, mutilations, permanent injuries, just injuries, unconscious people. So a thousand people, according to the math, if there's a thousand people dead, there's probably like 3k injured, probably like 1 to k permanent injury. It's it fucked war, up, okay? And they were it's ready fucked for up. It. But one thing they weren't sure about, the rebellion. It was war, and they were ready for it. But. Yo, that elephant needs to work on its glutes, brother. He needs to work on the ass cheeks. That shit ain't good. One thing they weren't sure about was why they were fighting. Well, some radicals were starting to throw around the I word, most hoped to eventually repair their relationship with Great Britain. So they sent a letter to King George saying, hey man, looks like things aren't going your way. Remove the taxes and let's be friends. <coughs> I'm gonna kill you. kick oh. your ass send that to the colonies your majesty your handwriting is terrible are you sure just do it what does it say he's gonna lick my ass. gross so for the remainder Why? of the year small engagements continued to occur around the colonies the british burned down the towns of falmouth <laughs> massachusetts and norfolk virginia as revenge for earlier anti-british incidents these actions played right into the hands of patriot propaganda overseas the british were seen as brutes i wonder why no one attacked britain during this time considering how much fucking trouble they had over here i, I figured this would be a pretty good time for friends to go yo 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 and the French and Spanish would soon begin or sending some supplies shit. to the rebel cause. During this time, there was also minor fighting going on between Patriot and Loyalist militias in the southern Ouch. colonies. Benedict Arnold was still on a mission to win some personal glory for himself, so he headed up an attempt to invade Canada in a two-pronged attack. The Continentals managed to capture some British forts and the city of Montreal, Quebec. but a harsh snowstorm with some smallpox on the side saw them defeated and pushed back at Quebec City, and they were forced to retreat all the way to Fort Ticonderoga. 
Speaking of which, remember all those guns and ammunition? Yeah, that name is familiar. Well, this guy's got a plan for what to do he with it. He uses oxen to drag 120,000 pounds of artillery for two months through the harsh winter, 300 miles all the way to Washington and his continental army surrounding Boston. He's gonna Boston. bomb Boston. Boom. Washington's got himself some big guns, which is fortunate. Where's the cock at? Uh, Y'all can see this ain't Henry VIII, huh? Look at that little thing. Look at that little thing. Big guns, which is fortunate because up until now his army had been suffering through the cold winter, not knowing when the siege would end. Now they could make a move. Washington wanted to launch a full assault on the city, but his junior officers felt the British were too fortified. And to his credit, Washington was great at hearing and taking on board the ideas of others. Instead, the Continentals worked through the night, setting the guns up on Dorchester Heights overlooking the city. And when dawn broke and the British saw the guns, they knew they were toast. Their positions were completely exposed. It was checkmate. They had no choice but to abandon the city. 120 ships carried nine. Redcoats. Oh, I was gonna say, where would they abandon the city? They're fully surrounded, right? But if the ships came, aren't they in range of the artillery? Can they just bomb the ships? And 2,000 loyalists away to an unknown fate, and Washington had his first victory of the war. Washington then moved his army to New York, knowing that when the British returned, they would probably land there. In the meantime, a friendly looking old man by the name of Thomas Paine had written and published a Thomas pamphlet Paine. called Common Sense, in which he advocated for total independence from Great Britain. It spread across the colonies like wildfire, and to this day remains the best selling title in America. It was really? read aloud in taverns and meeting halls, and brought the idea of independence into the mainstream. Congress began to seriously consider the idea. Thomas Jefferson was selected to write up an official declaration of independence, and he went hard, writing that all men are created equal, with certain inalienable rights, including life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Of course, Jefferson had over a hundred slaves, but we don't have to talk about that. On the 2nd <coughs> of July... <coughs> Thomas Jefferson was selected to write up an official declaration of... I guess not all men are that all made men are the same, huh? ...certain inalienable rights, including life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. God of damn. course, Jefferson had over a hundred slaves, but we don't have to talk about that. On the 2nd of July, Listen, Congress voted... They're not slaves, they're... Cheap labor. Unanimously in favor of independence. And John Adams declared slaves. that the 2nd of July would go down as the most remembered day in American history. Then a couple days later, independence actually came into effect. The United States of America was born. <laughs> there was no turning back now. The Americans tore down a statue of King George in Aww. New York and melted him down into 42,000 musket balls. To the British, it was treason. And if the king... They took down a statue of their king and made him into ammunition to use against the king. Yo, America, y'all savage. Y'all savage. He had his way. Washington and all savage. of Congress would be hung. Speaking of the British, guess who's back? The king sent an intimidating force of 130 warships and 25,000 men to New York. Washington knew that taking on the most powerful military in the world wouldn't be easy. The British set up camp on Staten Island as the Americans dug into defensive positions around Brooklyn Heights, waiting for an attack to come. But the British just waited, wearing down their opponent's nerve <sighs> while building their own strength. At one point, they launched a big scary artillery barrage and then said, you know, if I was you right now, I'd probably sue for peace. But Washington told them to shove it. The Americans kept holding out for what was coming, and when they finally hit, they hit hard. 15,000 British troops approached the American position, and the two sides fired on each other in massive rows. But what the Americans didn't realize was they were only fighting a decoy. The main British force was going around to flank the Americans from behind, and when they arrived, they inflicted heavy casualties. The Americans... Yo, one second. One second. Okay, I'm back. Sorry about that. Was ...panicked and retreated back to Brooklyn Heights, where they then found themselves trapped between the British Army and the river. It looked as though the war was already lost, but luckily, instead of attacking, the British decided to dig in for a siege, and then a thick fog set in, allowing... What are the, the, what are you sieging? The, you siege a city with fortifications. What are you sieging? What are you sieging? You already won the battles. You you you. Luckily, instead of attacking, the British decided to dig in for a siege, and then a thick fog set in, allowing Washington's army to escape across the river unimpeded. The British wow. continued to chase and engage the Americans up Manhattan, and the Americans suffered defeat after defeat after defeat. It was a disaster. Washington's leadership was called into question, as thousands of American POWs were left to rot as traitors. Washington's army fled through New Jersey, all the way down to Pennsylvania. Rarely had an army been so badly beaten, yet survived to fight another day. Damn. Oh, you're gonna end it like that? Okay, fair enough, fair enough. That's a pretty good point to end it. Okay, next time I guess we're gonna find out how they brought it back.
Anyway, what do you guys think? What do you guys think? Anyway, uh, today we'll be streaming some more Undertale. And if I beat that game pretty quickly, you know, pretty four or five hours, we're gonna play some Binding of, of Isaac. Okay, so join me for that if you at all sound interested in any of that shit. A uh, quick thank you to my YouTube members and Patreons. And I'll catch you all next time. Bye-bye, everybody.